Hey everybody, welcome back. Leo Potzel, that's the channel. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And to all my new subscribers, thank you very much for already subscribing. Guys, today is going to be a special video. I'm going to take you guys back a few years, back in 2011, and show you guys my very first saltwater tank. The 75 gallon tank you're looking at right here is my very first saltwater fish tank. And I'm glad to bring back these videos that I uploaded back in 2011 to you guys today back in 2015 to all my new subscribers. So my next few videos are going to be a series of videos that are going to recap my tank from when it was a 75 gallon to where it is today, my 125 gallon. Okay, so where do we start? Let's start on, my friend got me hooked on the hobby. He uh, encouraged me to get uh, a tank and I looked around and I found myself a 75 gallon used tank. And here we are a few months later filming my first video on YouTube and capturing this while I uh, acclimate these anemones to my tank and hopefully they mount onto live rock that I provided in the basket that's floating above the tank. With this tank, my friend of mine helped me plumb it all together and get my sump all ran. The package included was the tank with an overflow box with the drain and return. It came with the sump and the stand and canopy. From there, what I learned that I needed to do is add approximately one pound to a pound and a half for each gallon of water. So call it 75 gallons of water plus maybe a 20 gallon sump. I'm going to say maybe 80, 85 gallons of water. So I aim to have approximately 85 gallons or 85 pounds of live rock. So in this tank right here, you're looking at live rock. It's a Fiji live rock. And um, I picked this up at my local fish store for approximately $6 a pound. So at $6 a pound for the live rock, at 80 pounds of live rock, we got $480 worth of live rock in this tank at 80 pounds. So along with that, the live rock, we added about 15 to 20 pounds of live sand crushed coral to the system when we first started. Along with tap water, as I did not have an RO unit. So now looking at the tank a month later, we're going to see a few changes as I added a few more fish to the system. As for lighting, we have here a 48 inch fixture that has two metal halide bulbs at 175 watts each along with two T5 bulbs that are 54 watts each. And the T5 bulbs are a Tinic and 10K bulbs that are plugged into a timer that are on for approximately 8 to 10 hours a day. You will also notice that I have a power head on the right hand side of the tank along with the left hand side of the tank to create as much flow as possible with the equipment that I have. Even though this system is running on a sump filtration system and there is a return pump that is pushing water into the display tank which is creating flow, I additionally needed to add a power head on each side of the tank. This is a 48 inch tank and for me to have enough flow as that I thought was necessary I added a power head onto the right side of the tank along with to the left side of the tank which will help export and import the waste and food to the fish and coral. As far as maintenance goes for this system I try to regularly do a water change every two weeks approximately 10 gallons. So what I normally do is I get tap water I let it sit in my reservoir Rubbermaid container. From there I mix up the salt with a pump, let it sit for 24 hours. The next day I'll check it and adjust the salt level accordingly to where I need it to be, which I try to aim for the range of 1.025 parts per million on the refractometer or hydrometer. In the reservoir where I had the water for the new water change, at first I did not have a heater as I noticed by leaving it out for 24 hours and mixing by the next day it would be around room temperature which would be approximately the tank temperature. So from there I would do the water change by siphoning out approximately 10 gallons of water from either the sand bed 
or even just from the tank alone, just in the middle of the tank, which not cleaning the sand bed. You can notice in this video clip a few more changes. For an example, on the left side here, this white anemone, you can see that it does not is not getting as much flow as it was previously. As one of my power heads failed on me, it needs to be replaced. You can also notice here that these toadstools have also multiplied. And um, you can see here that the anemones, we have one, two, three anemones here, which they split from being one anemone into three anemones. So I'm not sure exactly what I did in this, uh, this last few months in this video, but for whatever reason, the anemones did split. It could be the change of flow, it could be the change of water parameters, but the lighting is still the same and I've still been doing the same amount of water changes like normal. So I'm assuming it probably has to do with flow, Why the reason why the anemones possibly split. Another thing that you might notice is there's not as many fish as there was in the previous video clip. And from what I recall, it was probably because I got a sickness from one of the fish that I imported into my tank along with the trigger that you just saw there a few seconds ago in the video. I now know that the triggers are not recommended to be in a community tank like this as the triggers are more an aggressive fish and they will eat other fish and possibly corals. So they may not be as safe as in a reef tank or a community tank. So that was a lesson to be learned. That I introduced a fish to the tank that possibly had ick. So that is something that you may want to consider in having a quarantine tank or just acclimating them to the tank as best as possible. And as well as learning which fish you are able to keep in your tank and are not uh, able to keep in your tank that are compatible with the other fish and corals. And the size of your tank as well. So guys, those are a few little things that I've learned along with the hobby that I'd like to share with you guys. And, uh, you know, this is the process of my 75-gallon tank back in 2011, guys. And now we are in 2015, and I have myself a 125-gallon tank, which all of this live rock, all of the fish and coral and starfish and everything in this tank came along with me to the new tank, the 125 gallon where we are today guys. And that's what I'm here to show you guys in this video is showing you guys the way back playback of the tank and how it was back in 2011. Well guys, definitely stay tuned. This was part one today of the 75 gallon build to the 125 gallon build guys over the last few years process which I want to take you guys back in and capture this and go back over a few things and tips and tricks that I've learned over the years that I would like to share with you guys. So definitely uh, subscribe, stay tuned, uh, go ahead and leave a comment and uh, like it, share it on your social media guys. Leo Potzel, that's the channel. Uh, we're going to be revealing some more details of the system right from the filtration and equipment and everything else that goes along with the tank guys. So stay tuned, Leo Potzel. So you know what it is till next time.